We have been looking at how children develop two essential capacities, language and the ability to read. Based on the research we have read, it seems clear that children from different social backgrounds develop language and reading at different rates. Much of the explanation of these differential rates of development comes from the social and interpersonal environment into which the children are born and in in which they grow up, with those from more disadvantaged backgrounds showing slower development of both language and reading. We can see certain similarities between the development of language and the development of cognition. At birth, the neural structures necessary for language have not yet developed. As we have read, through hearing repeatedly the sounds of words and associating those sounds with objects, children begin to repeat them through their own speech. This process requires the development of new axonal connections between the parts of the brain involved in hearing and language. Reading takes this development process one step further by adding recognition of the pattern of letters that form a written word and associating that word with the sound of the word and the thing it represents. Once again, learning to read requires new axonal development with better readers showing stronger patterns of axonal myelation. Myelination. Cognition develops in a manner similar to language and reading. As described earlier, we consider cognition as involving knowing, remembering, and reasoning. At birth, human infants do not have the capacity to know things, and they have few memories. As a consequence, they do not possess the capacity to reason. They have to develop these capacities by observing and interacting with their environment. In a manner analogous to the staged development of language and reading, the acquisition of cognitive abilities also develops in stages. When we discuss the childhood stages in the development of cognitive abilities, the name of Jean Piaget often comes up. Piaget was a Swiss psychologist who proposed a theory regarding the stages of cognitive development in children, suggesting that there was a common sequencing to this development. Piaget emphasized the importance of a child's environment in affecting this development through things such as a child's listening, exploring the environment, and reading, either being read to or learning to read oneself. The first stage described by Piaget is the sensoromotor stage. At birth, the child can see objects in its environment, but doesn't recognize that the object is separate from itself. Similarly, if the object is removed from the infant's field of vision, the infant has no further awareness of the continued existence of that object. As described by Piaget, the infant lacks a sense of what he referred to as object permanence. As the child goes through this phase, he or she gains a sense that objects actually do exist as separate from themselves. By interacting with objects in their environment, an infant also learns that she or he can cause things to happen. She can move an object to a different place, perhaps even throw it somewhere or cover it up with something. As part of the object permanence they developed, infants learn that the object continues to exist even when it can't be seen. The infant knows that when we take the blanket off the toy that has been covered up, the toy will still be there. The next stage is referred to as the pre-operational stage. In this stage, a child is able to begin to use symbols to represent objects. An example of such a symbol might be a picture of an object or a word that represents that object. This symbolic awareness allows the infant to begin to develop capacities such as counting and recognizing the difference between the present and either the past or the future. 
the child is still primarily present focused with more attention paid to the concrete than to the abstract. It may be difficult for the child to recognize that rearranging the shape in which a series of objects are arranged does not actually change the number of objects within that shape. By about age seven, a child enters what Piaget referred to as the concrete operational stage. In this stage, a child is able to extend her or his ability to think abstractly and symbolically and to imagine events that happen beyond her direct awareness. She also comes to understand that different people may have different perceptions and different points of view than the child herself. In this stage, a child begins to develop the ability to organize his thoughts and to think in terms of logical sequences. For example, planning to do one's homework before playing computer games as a logical sequence. Even in this stage, a child may be more directly focused on the concrete world in her immediate environment than on the symbolic world that exists beyond that environment, but at least she is aware that the other world exists simultaneously with her own. The final stage in Piaget's, Piaget's theory is the formal operational stage, which begins around age 11 and continues through adolescence into adulthood. As a child transitions into this stage, he's able to think more abstractly and to learn to recognize and apply rules of logic. The child is more capable of using scientific and evidence-based reasoning to test hypotheses. As a child in this stage is more generally aware of others in his environment and of the opinions and cultural values those others may hold that differ from the child's own, a child can begin applying a system of values to guide his own action and to judge the action of others. It is these abilities that enable a child to pursue the more complex educational challenges of language, especially a foreign language, and topics such as mathematics and science, and of history and cultural values. These abilities also enable a child to develop more extensive networks of social relationships. While Piaget's theory of the stages of cognitive development in children provides a valuable perspective and one that has been widely adopted in psychological and other disciplinary studies of child development, there are still those who question certain aspects of it. Clearly, some children develop the skills Piaget describes at earlier or sometimes perhaps at later ages than Piaget described. Others question his somewhat limited view of the capacities of young infants to begin to develop their intellectual abilities and to think in more abstract ways, even though they can't yet necessarily express these ideas to others. In either case, becoming familiar with the theory Piaget described is a valuable basis on which to develop our own understanding of the cognitive development of children.